would not be a problem. Okay? Okay, so I officially welcome all of you here in Lviv, yes, again in this online meeting, Teaching and Learning Europe. My name is Roman Kalichak. I'm associate professor at Ivan Franko National University of Lviv. We met, uh, we know each other because, yes, uh, at least from emailing list, yes, I have opportunity to see you here online. But again, I hope that we will have more opportunities in the future to meet in person. Uh, I would like to just several several things to say in advance. Please turn off your microphone to avoid this background noise. Yes, at least uh, one or two person can speak simultaneously. Otherwise, we may have some may have some technical issue. In fact, yesterday I successfully deleted. Our link email is successfully successfully recovered later. Our link for this Zoom conference. So it's already as so in advance. I apologize for any for, for any technical inconvenience. Uh, this is today workshop. We will discuss quite important and largely unknown topics for our regions. In fact, how EU is studied, it taught outside of the EU is rather unknown, it's quite a neglected topic, it's why quite important that we here together can contribute and provide our perspective uh, by focusing on different institutional, pedagogic and other aspects that could be relevant to understand how EU is studied and learned outside of the EU and compare with uh, best practices, experience how the EU studied within the European Union. This, I think this crisis comparative perspective would be quite valuable. I'm very grateful for all of you for your contribution, for joining uh, this workshop, for contributing to this workshop as participants, as uh, discussant, as attendees. I think I wish to all of us quite pro fruitful discussions and I pass uh, now to Bashak Alpan. Bashak Alpan is our lead coordinator. Bashak, please, a few, few words. Uh, good morning. Uh, I welcome you all, all to our first workshop of the LEAP project, uh, uh, Teaching and Learning Europe. Uh, my name is Basha Kalpan and uh, I'm the coordinator of the LEAP project, LEAP network uh, indeed, uh, from the Middle East Technical University, Ankara, Turkey. Uh, and as you probably heard, uh, LEAP stands for uh, linking to Europe at the periphery. And um, in a nutshell, our uh, network, uh, all those uh, brilliant LEAPers in a way, uh, we uh, are aiming to explore how the EU is taught and learned, uh, experienced and contested at the periphery of the EU. Uh, actually, in this respect, our network has uh, three uh, axes. Uh, the first one being uh, the educational and uh, epistemological aspect of the EU integration. And that's why we are here. That's why uh, we aim to organize this, uh, this very first workshop. Um, so, and actually the, the crux of this aim is to disassociate the practical hurdles of EU integration from the cutting edge research on the EU integration because EU studies is a discipline on its own merit. So we need to uh, think differently uh, regardless of where our country or where we uh, stand in terms of the EU integration. So this is kind of the crux of our uh, first axis of our network. Um, thank you so much for making it to this uh, workshop. It's a bit heartbreaking not to be able to uh, socialize in the coffee breaks in this great room in Lviv or exploring the wonders of Lviv, but I'm sure, I hope, uh, one day we will be able to do that all together. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate the hard work of the Lviv team. They really worked very hard. They worked twice, actually, because we were hoping to do this uh, <laughs> workshop in first of March, later on June, but, you know, things um, got in a different direction. So I really appreciate uh, their hard work. Uh, and um, we are hoping to uh, bring together the, these brilliant ideas and these brilliant presentations in a special issue. And I already... Uh, 
contacted with some of the journals and uh, got very positive feedback. So I'm really looking forward to this one and a half day workshop. And hopefully one day we will meet in person. All the best and uh, enjoy the workshop. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Bashak. <laughs> I would like to, to mention that we have here with us all six partners, all six university partners, our colleagues from Ilya State University from Georgia. We have Boz and David Abrasidze, Georgia Gvalia. We have uh, our colleague uh, from National University of Political Studies, Public Administration from Bucharest, uh, Romania, Miruna Tronkotu. Okay. Hello, Miruna. Nice to meet you. Uh, we should have, I don't see, Efrim Khoti from University of Pristina, Kosovo. Yes. We have also Ali Nur Zalik from Eskih University. Yes, nice to, nice to see you, Ali Nur. I think, I hope the weather is very nice in Turkey. Yes, it's very sunny, nice. You don't see this is period of coronavirus. We co we complain about the sun. Uh, you complain about yeah. the sun. Okay. Not like not like Eric. Sorry, Eric, but we complain the sun now. <laughs> I like you. I like you. Okay. So against we can proceed. I okay. I just wanted to tell Ali that we have the Eric season here now, so we have very nice Eric to eat here. Okay. Well, you know what does Eric mean in Turkish, I guess. <laughs> yes, I used to work in Turkey, so I know. <laughs> Eric is uh, actually uh, uh, those who Turkish. Uh, Eric means plump uh, in Turkish, so that's why I think he's referring to Eric. <laughs> yeah. And our, I think uh, uh, Afrim is here as well. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, good morning from Pristina. Welcome. Nice to see. You. Nice to see you. Morning. Welcome. Thanks, Professor. Okay. I think we can start our first part, and we have two dis two distinguished guests. I'm particularly pleased to a privilege to welcome Gabriela Carmen Pascario, University. She is university professor from Alexander Ioan Kuza, University of Yashi. Quite impressive curriculum, I would say. She is founder and director of Center of European Studies at this university. She, she is Jean Monet chair holder, but she, uh, she published a lot on different aspects of EU studies. But more importantly for our project, she is coordinator of other Jean Monnet network, European Union at its neighborhood network for enhancing EU actorness in the Eastern borderlands. This project should have been completed this year, I imagine. I don't know if you ask for extension or no, like everyone else, yes. But uh, this project is quite important because this project involves this part of Europe. It's very important to have this kind of connections and interaction between different genre projects. So I'm, I'm very grateful for you to join us, us today. Unfortunately, you were supposed to be here in Lewis Valley in March, but again, I thank you for sharing your experience, your thoughts, ideas about your project. I think it will enrich the content of our project. It will be quite interesting for all my colleagues. The floor is yours. Good morning. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we okay. can hear you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, organizing this event and uh, for inviting, uh, inviting me to, to contribute with um, a short presentation about uh, the network I coordinated in my uh, university. And also to congratulate our colleagues from Middle East Technical University of Turkey for coordination of the uh, Jamone network. I know very well how challenging uh, could be to, to work with many partners from uh, different countries. Um, I would like to, to share my presentation if, um, if possible, I will try to do it. It's okay? Yes, we, we can see that. You see, okay. Yes, we can see, yes, thank you.
Um, it was the name and um, um, the main coordinate of our uh, our project. Uh, the project is implemented in the um, in uh, the Center for European Studies. Um, our department is an interfaculty department integrated in the Faculty of Law, considering um, uh, the reglementation in education. And um, I would like to, to start with a uh, with few um, words about our uh, university city, our university of um, as a department, a short introduction. Uh, Yash is um, one of the most important uh, university city in the northeast of uh, Romania, very close to the border, uh, border uh, with, border with um, Moldavia and also with Ukraine. And for this, we have um, a lot of projects in cross-border cooperation. This project also is one of uh, these kind of projects. Um, sorry. Um, also, our, um, our city is one of the most important um, uh, economic uh, center of um, our region, uh, with a lot of um, international multinational companies. But um, um, uh, most important is um, our city has five universities. It's one of the bigger, uh, biggest um, university cities uh, of, um, of Romania. A few pictures. Maybe um, they like uh, you like it and um, you will um, intend to visit our university um, uh, to the next uh, our events, of course, if uh, we uh, will recover our normal life in the next, uh, next period. Um, our university is uh, the oldest high uh, university of Romania, but it's one of the most relevant universities in, in, um, now with uh, many students, 15 faculties, and a lot of uh, publication and international um, agreements. And uh, finally, about our department, uh, as an interdisciplinary department in the Faculty of Law, it integrated in the Faculty of, uh, Faculty of Law, um, our activities are focused on the master programs in European studies, including the one, including, uh, one program in English, addressing to East, Eastern, uh, Eastern um, uh, neighborhood. Um, we have um, various publica publications, journals, very well indexed, and currently we implement uh, we um, um, implement uh, four important research research project project um, two Jean Monnet projects. Um, the project I coordinate, uh, Jean Monnet Network, but also we received um, um, in our university. Uh, three new Jean Monnet projects this year in the competition of this year, and one of these projects is implemented in our department. Uh, these projects are financed by uh, national funds, but are very, very relevant in, uh, project um, um, with um, um, one and a half million euro uh, both project um, uh, in, um, from the national research funds. So we have a lot of uh, uh, lot of um, uh, things to do in this uh, in this project. But I think that anyway, the most challenging project is the Jean Monnet network because um, this um, is the relevance of the Jean Monnet project in our university. We started with uh, the project in um, uh, 2001 um, and. Um, uh, our department uh, implemented already um, around 10, uh, 10 projects, Jean Monnet project. Um, in um, our project, uh, network project, we have uh, 11 partners from uh, six countries. And it's very, very difficult to implement. I will uh, um, point some aspects about these difficulties. Of course, we have a lot of opportunities to, to uh, to uh, meet uh, colleagues and to cooperate for uh, teaching or uh, activity or research activities. But anyway, it's very difficult to, to work with 11 partners from various countries with uh, uh, very important differences in, um, in um, um, reglementations, in uh, the legislation, in uh, public, uh, private, pro um, in, uh, in public procurement and uh, um, in um, um, Reglementations about the quality of teaching and so on. 
Um, you can see here um, um, the partners, our partners. Um, we have uh, three partners from uh, Romania, but also uh, the other partners from, uh, from uh, other five countries, Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, um, uh, Republic of um, uh, Moldova um, and uh, Hungary. Uh, we have also um, partner um, universities as partner, but um, we have um, uh, NGO because uh, one of the main idea of the project is to, to ensure the co uh, cooperation between, uh, between universities and um, uh, civil society representatives. Uh, here um, I um, I try to to uh, to include. Um, a short presentation of uh, our activities. We have uh, teaching activities, research, and uh, this um, um, has been results um, included in the projects uh, and a lot of events um, organized uh, in all countries uh, involved in the project. But most important, this is all these activities um, are organized um, um, by cooperation between uh, between um, our partners. Um, considering the uh, teaching activities, um, we address our our courses um, uh, to academics, but first of all to to professionals and um, to the students from other um, other um, uh, area of uh, education as. Um, um, the discipline uh, focused on uh, European integration in order to increase the knowledge about European integration in, uh, in uh, the countries involved in the, in the project. I uh, would like to mention these uh, research activities because, because in Romania, we have, uh, from, um, uh, from my view, um, a very important limit uh, considering the Jean Monnet, considering Jean Monnet project. Uh, in Romania, our ministry don't recognize the uh, Jean Monnet project as research project. And all uh, of us, we know, we know um, that if um, the coordinator of the, pro um, the promoter of, uh, of this kind of project or the team don't, um, don't have uh, relevant, uh, relevant results in research, uh, it's not possible to, to be financed, to, to receive um, financing for this, uh, for the Jean Monnet, uh, Jean Monnet uh, projects. And um, anyway, in, um, in my university, but I know that the situation is uh, also uh, the same in other universities in Romania, Jean Monnet projects are not considering um, uh, research, uh, research projects. And it's important to limit because our evaluation and um, in uh, our promotion um, in, uh, in Romania are mainly dependent about the research acti activities and um, our involvement and the coordination of research projects. But um, um, anyway, uh, um, I, um, all my colleagues are uh, strongly involved in, the, in, this, uh, in these researches. Research one is already uh, finished. And um, even if uh, 2020, it was the last year of, uh, of uh, Jean Monnet project, we received um, one uh, year more uh, to, to finish our activities, uh, considering the pandemic uh, impact um, in all Europe uh, with, um, with a lot of limits, uh, especially in the case of uh, cross-border cooperation uh, projects. Um, the concept, uh, the main idea, the main, the main dimensions of our concept, it was a cross-border um, cooperation, uh, interdisciplinary approach, um, the relation with the civil society and the non-academic partners, and uh, linkages between teaching and research activities. The most, um, more important, I think, that all our Germanic uh, projects are related with our um, ordinary usually activities, the program, master program, and uh, also uh, in our department, department we have uh, only two main um, axes of research. One uh, uh, research direction is focused on uh, EU Eastern neighborhood, uh, including cross-border cooperation, and second, uh, second activity, uh, acts of research is focused on uh, regional development and uh, the challenging of um, specific aspects of uh, the peripheral uh, areas. 
Um, and all our projects, um, if uh, we talk about the uh, Jean Monnet project or a project financed by international funds or national funds, are um, related with uh, these uh, two, uh, two axes of research in our department. All my colleagues, all my PhD students um, are um, uh, oriented um, to, to this, um, to this um, um, uh, two um, main axes of research. I think that it's very important because um, in this way we could generate synergies and complementarities between our, uh, all our um, activities. And um, one of the uh, one of the many uh, aspects uh, I think that it's important too is that the project is uh, even if we have research activities as um, a fundamental uh, uh, research um, um, teaching activities and uh, the relevance of the research uh, uh, project. Uh, uh, programs are very empirical uh, oriented uh, with relevance for policies. Um, anyway, we will have as results um, um, some um, uh, policy uh, recommendations. Um, general, uh, uh, general results included in our project, but the mo the, you know, we could, uh, we could, uh, um, uh, we could, could uh, talk finally about the consolidation of the European dimension as in excellence. Um, in the academic programs and um, the network effect. The fact uh, that we have uh, universities from various countries and uh, this project could be and will be a basis for uh, development of other projects in, um, in um, education cooperation and uh, or, uh, and or research, uh, research um, um, cooperation. Uh, some uh, quantifiable results, some outputs, um, um, a lot of events, national and international, with many participants, um, summer school um, um, forum, uh, forum with uh, uh, civil society, um, different activities for uh, students and um, um, various uh, competitions and um, scientific publications. Um, the papers in um, various uh, journals and also um, and also um, a new new book uh, edited in an international uh, um, publisher. Um, we have also um, um, one of the most uh, important events in our university organized by my department, Eurint Conference. Unfortunately, uh, organized in May usually. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, year um, the conference with uh, was uh, sorry what was postponed for October and uh, will be organized as webinar. And I kindly invite you to participate. And I hope uh, the next year in May the closing uh, conference of our project will be organized on site, face to face. And I would like also to to invite you to to participate. A uh, few pictures and a uh, few information, but I will move, uh, move on. It's uh, not important to insist uh, now. Um, our teaching activities um, 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 are um, oriented um, to different uh, target groups. Um, this uh, this um, uh, course, for example, is uh, dedicated to the student, PhD students and post, uh, postdoctoral uh, students, young, uh, young researchers. Uh, this course is oriented uh, to, um, uh, to, general, uh, to general public and uh, this uh, one is, organi is organized uh, having as a target group professionals in cross-border uh, uh, programs. Um, I think uh, the most important aspect is that all our um, teaching activities uh, are organized online. Um, we anticipated, uh, I think, um, um, the necessity to, to develop in uh, cross-border cooperation this kind of activities, but we have students from uh, all the uh, countries covered, uh, covered by the project and also all um, um, uh, didactic materials, teaching materials are uh, elaborated by um, joint team at least uh, um, two professor at least two uh, at least two professor at least from two countries covered by um, by the project. Um, also, various um, other activities, um, events, pictures from various events, um, uh, competition for the students. 
Uh, one neighbor a neighborhood day is organized in all the countries covered, covered in, uh, in the project, including the young participants with uh, cultural activities. Um, also, um, one international forum. Um, about the first uh, research activities uh, already completed, um, uh, uh, the objectives, um, uh, the objective of uh, this research activity was to, to test, to evaluate, to assess the efficiency of the neighborhood instruments um, based on uh, qualitative and quantitative methods uh, with uh, surveys and um, focus group uh, structure and interviews. Uh, the same methods are, in, are used in the second research activities, um, trying to evaluate the tertiary education in European studies in the countries covered by, uh, by the project. Uh, it's a work in progress and this, um, this uh, research activity was the main, um, the main um, argument, the main, um, uh, the main um, um, Task none uh, none uh, none uh, finished yet, and for this I uh, ask to the commission to the agency to to give us one year more to to finish this research activity. About the opportunities, uh, all of us we know very well the opportunities um, um, from this kind of project. Uh, we have a lot of benefits from um, our you know, um, institutions. Um, and also for our uh, our teams, so for uh, project directors and for partners, our general uh, aspect is this kind of project um, uh, is uh, important for us, for uh, the linkages with the civil society and also with the um, partners from um, all uh, the five uh, countries um, um, except Romania. Um, I would like to to uh, to, to, uh, to to tell you some something about the risks uh, in this project because um, it's very difficult to coordinate a project with uh, a very different partners with very different interests and uh, very uh, av uh, availability to be in, to be involved in all uh, activities because we have a complexity of activities, teaching, research, event, and so on. It's a project uh, very time consuming and um, it's not easy to, to, to implement uh, this, uh, this um, kind of project, especially um, considering the relation between uh, the service, if we talk about the individual members in the project, and um, um, uh, uh, the benefits in terms of um, uh, the benefits in terms of visibility and um, the time uh, allocated uh, to various activities in these projects. Um, we have um, anyway some attractive, uh, uh, attractive aspects um, um, considering um, the whole, uh, the whole uh, program Jean Monnet because our project um, very well uh, administrated um, with a procedure more flexible as uh, the national project, for example. Um, in our um, country, it's more difficult to implement the project financed by national funds as uh, the Jean Monnet project because legislation is more flexible. Um, one now, uh, uh, some, uh, some important difficulties uh, are related with the co-financing. Um, not all the time the university is very happy to, to give, uh, to, to put uh, the part uh, um, to, to co-finance um, co um, uh, this, uh, this project and also it's a very strong uh, competition at the uh, um, European, uh, European level. We know that it's not easy to receive uh, uh, financing for uh, Jean Monnet projects. And um, finally, I um, encourage all, um, all my colleagues and uh, all our partners to implement uh, this project because it could be very, uh, could be, could, uh, could, could give us an important value from various, uh, various uh, point of view, even if it's uh, sometimes could be very difficult to implement it. And as I already told you, uh, it's not very easy to be involved in project uh, not recognizing the research activities, as is the case in Romania. I don't know if uh, in other countries uh, is the same situation. Uh, next event, as I already mentioned, we have uh, we are having um, this year um, two events. Um, 
I'm sure that uh, it's, it will not be possible to organize on site and uh, um, will be organized uh, as webinar. And uh, uh, we also hope that uh, the next year in May, the closing uh, conference of our project will be organized in Yash and I kindly invite you to, to participate. Uh, thank you again for inviting uh, me and um, to give me the opportunity to present you our project. And um, if you have questions about our project, if you want to, to, uh, to keep the contact uh, with us and to cooperate for future projects, I would like to, to do it. Thank you. Thank you many, many thanks for sharing so valuable insights about this Jean Monnet network. Dear colleagues, you can raise your hand, ask your question, you can use the chat function for your questions. Maybe, my, if I may, my question is about your partner from Belarus. As my understanding is that Belarus is involved in your project, yes? Yes. How efficient and productive is your cooperation with your Belarusian colleagues? Just curious about this. The colleagues from Belarus? Yes. Um, the colleagues from Belarus are interested especially in uh, research activities and um, they um, they contribute uh, very well to the research activities. It was more difficult to organize events and uh, they postponed the events uh, for the next uh, for the next year and also um, they prefer to, to be less involved in the teaching activities, but uh, uh, they contribute um, uh, they um, uh, contribute uh, very well to our research uh, uh, research activities in the project. Um, it was a more difficult first year, um, but um, after uh, discuss. Um, um, all the aspect, uh, legislative aspects, the, leg um, the differences between leg legislation about salaries, uh, the evaluation, and so on, um, uh, we we start to to cooperate better, better. But first year was um, more difficult. But it was the same, for example, for uh, for uh, Hungary and also for Poland. For, uh, we cooperate uh, better with Ukraine with, uh, and with Moldavia, Republic of Moldavia, but prob probably because in uh, these uh, countries we um, uh, cooperate with colleagues um, as um, we know from um, previous projects. Yes, many thanks. We have a question from Bashak about what were challenges of bringing different universities from different countries together from you study this point of view. Again, it's about these differences from different contexts put in together. Yes, it's very difficult, but it was very challenging. I, uh, I learned a lot about the cooperation, <laughs> academic cooperation. But do you like to repeat the same experience in the future? <laughs> Are you already well, very well equipped <laughs> for similar challenges? In this? And it's a very good experience anyway. <laughs> Any one more question. I'm just curious because we witnessed quite remarkable accomplishments of Romania Academia in your studies during the last 15 years. In fact, we could witness here from Ukraine and congratulations on this, yes. But my question, Romania is quite a big country. Yes, you have quite a large academic communities. Is this big communities tend to be very focused on domestic issues, say less they are more reluctant to cooperate internationally. At least this is the case of Ukraine. We are very here in Ukraine, very inward looking. Yes. What about Romania? How more basically visible Romania became and to which extent this John Monet project contributed to this international visibility from your point of view? Because you mentioned you benefited from, already from many John Monet projects. Okay, um, I don't know um, uh, the general situation in, um, in uh, other universities, but in uh, my projects, uh, in our projects in, uh, in my department, I try to, to ensure um, uh, all time uh, international, uh, international um, to, to organize international activities. For example, in, our, uh, um, in uh, all our e events, we invited um, 
colleagues um, from um, from other countries not involved in the projects, um, um, for example, and um, also um, we uh, we ensure by uh, Jean Monnet project the international events. We um, we developed uh, journals with uh, international visibility, and we, uh, and I invited uh, colleagues from uh, Western from uh, universities from uh, uh, Western to, to publish uh, in our journals. Um, and um, um, I um, I uh, um, I uh, insisted to my colleagues to to ensure an international dimension dimension to all uh, their activities in Jamone project. This um, is the case in my department. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We have one more question from Afrim Hoti from Kosovo because your university is located closer to Moldavia border, yet to Eastern uh, border. But his question is, if Romania is still interested to cooperate with Western Balkan countries, especially with countries with say, who share the same border. Sorry? If Romania is still interested to cooperate with Western Balkan countries, to the extent I, if your, if your main focus is only on this, on your eastern border, yes, I mean with Ukraine, uh, Belarus, or Moldova, obvious the reason, or to which extent you are still interested in cooperating with Western Balkan? Oh, why not? Uh, I um, uh, we focused uh, our project on Eastern Balkan because uh, we are in the northeast of uh, of uh, Romania, but. Um, we are interested to, to cooperate with, uh, also with Western Bal Balkan uh, countries, university from, uh, from uh, Western Balkan countries. We have um, a lot of authors publishing in our uh, journals, for example, from uh, Western Balkan countries. And uh, why not? I uh, would like to do it. <laughs> OK, yeah. many thanks. We have one more question from Svetlana Batsukova about the role you mentioned about already about the role of non-governmental organization to which extent the involvement was a uh, quite rewarding experience for you to which extent they contributed to the success of your project because i okay. see that you have several NGO from ukraine by the way yes um in our project um the ngo um, um contribute to the research uh, research activities uh with for example with, with um um, the structure of the interviews and also they give uh, give us um, the expert expertise um, related to um, uh, to the prog project implementing uh, by other cross border uh, bro uh, cross border cooperation programs for example the project or um, um, implemented by uh, the neighbor neighborhood instrument and um, also, uh, they were uh, involved in um, um, organizing in the events, organizing, um, improving, enhancing the relation with um, the public and private um, uh, stakeholders. stakeholders. Um, it was uh, it was the main contribution. It was to to ensure the linkages between between the university and uh, the society, uh, various uh, various uh, representatives from uh, public in institutions, for example, and uh, also our colleagues uh, from uh, um, uh, were involved in uh, our publication. They contribute effectively. Um, um, uh, to the uh, research activities and uh, and uh, publication of uh, various papers. Okay. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I encourage you to ask you more questions. You can raise your hand and with yourself ask Gabriela. Do you have any more questions? Okay, please Natalia. Well, I've got a question connected with the uh, with current situation, with the coronavirus uh, situation. How did you, or did you overcome this uh, uh, problem in your cooperation with your partners? I mean, uh, organizing and managing all the things connected with the interaction and uh, this cooperation and uh, different kinds of communication. 
Okay, uh, in um, in this in uh, the last month, um, uh, um, all activities in our project uh, were uh, blocked. Uh, we uh, we stop um, um, the implementation of the project except the research activities, uh, where we will continue to 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 um, develop um, our um, our uh, our research and to publish. We have uh, some last uh, papers um, in uh, in evaluation in uh, different uh, publications. And uh, this is why um, we ask to the agency to to accord us to uh, to give us one year more, and uh, um, uh, we postpone our activities uh, for the next academic years. And um, if, um, if um, the pandemic situation will uh, uh, will uh, will continue, we'll try to organize uh, uh, events um, only online. Uh, but um, for other activities, um, um, the last one, the second, uh, the second uh, research program uh, focused on the education, tertiary education in uh, in uh, European studies. I think that will be possible to be already achieve um, uh, in the current context. I don't see um, a problem uh, to to achieve our um, objectives in terms of um, output of the project. Because uh, fortunately, um, uh, it was the last year of the project with not not so many activities uh, um, in the stage of uh, uh, in being in progress. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you again for your valuable contribution. Again, sharing this quite uh, Thank you. valuable, insightful information. It will be useful for for our for our project and as well. Thank you. So we have one more question, by the way. Is is from Irina Sikorskaya? If your material you mentioned will be open access, but they will be available on your website, I imagine. Not all, not all of results, but anyway, some results is, uh, are in uh, in open access. I, um, I invite all of you to send me an email, and um, I uh, um, um, I will uh, give you um, access to to our papers in uh, private. Uh, for private uh, Many thanks, many thanks for this again. We are privileged in this case to many have thanks. you today and have this, uh, open, this private access to your, to your research. Thank you again, Gabriela. I see, so I see, I see, I see Andrei Makarovich is already joining us. Greetings from Lviv, Andrei. Exactly, exactly. Uh, here. Andrei Makarovich is, Makarovich is from University of Tartu, Estonia. He had many affiliations with many, many international institutions. He is originally from Russia. Uh, why, why we invited Andrei? Andrei coordinated other Jean Monnet Network. Jean Monnet Network, because Gab is Jean Monnet Network of Gabriela was his main focus on Eastern European country, yes. In the case of Andre, it was south of Caucasus, Andre, yes. If you be more correct, to share with us your experience about your genre. Hey, uh, the floor is yours. First of all, thank you for inviting me to this uh, very interesting and I think very timely discussion. And uh, I do regret very much that we could not meet uh, face to face uh, due to all these circumstances, but. Uh, I'm sure uh, we'll have a chance uh, quite soon. Uh, well, in my uh, presentation, I would like just to share with you some of uh, my uh, not very academic uh, uh, experiences of uh, participating in, in a number of uh, projects uh, related to the intersection of educational and uh, more academic or scholarly activities and uh, one of them, that's what uh, Raman mentioned, uh, uh, we have uh, participated in a uh, project of launching a Baltic Black Sea Studies uh, program in the Ukraine, University of Lviv. Uh, we also participated in a, a project on developing European studies in Tajikistan. Uh, 
We also had a project on academic responses to hybrid threats, uh, in which uh, it's not Jamana, it's a different uh, uh, funding uh, framework, but it directly relates to Ukraine. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the activities have been postponed. But uh, that was uh, uh, about uh, how to uh, include issues related to new security threats into the uh, curriculum of Ukrainian uh, universities. And uh, the leading partner there is University of Yvaskula in uh, Finland. And uh, we are also starting a new uh, small project on teaching sensitive issues in uh, classrooms, which I somehow initiated based on my um, experience of uh, participating in the uh, internationalized uh, uh, programs uh, across uh, many, many borders. And uh, uh, again, what I'm going to talk about is partly based on my uh, practitioner perspective uh, as, as a participant of uh, project-based activities. And in the same uh, time, also as a scholar who studies uh, uh, international relations and comparative politics. And you know, uh, what I think is the most intriguing part of this uh, combination is that uh, sometimes uh, we teach subjects in which we ourselves are uh, actors or participants. Uh, we teach uh, international relations, we teach globalization, and uh, I think this is uh, quite, uh, quite intriguing uh, to look at how our activities might be uh, conceptualized from, let's say, a broader perspective. And I will touch upon this broader perspective from the very beginning, and then I will come back to more, like, let's say, local uh, outlook at this from the perspective of University of Tartu. Uh, well, definitely what we are doing is a part of a uh, globalization paradigm of higher education. But if you look uh, more specifically at what is inside of globalization, you can see two different uh, tracks or different uh, agendas. So on the one hand, you would see uh, what I would uh, call an orientalization of uh, European academia, not in the Edward Said sense, but more like in the sense of expanding or opening up uh, our um, our education activities and project related activities to Eastern uh, partners of uh, the European Union. But in the meantime, we also see this Europeanization of non-EU uh, educational system in partner countries, which I think is, uh, is a fascinating uh, combination of different, uh, uh, different tracks. And uh, when I started thinking about how this broader, wider uh, political issues uh, relate to our activity or interfere into our activity. Uh, at a certain point, uh, I was starting looking at the literature and uh, I discovered that I'm not alone uh, in looking at this, uh, these big issues. And uh, just uh, I'll, I'll give you a very short uh, reference to uh, the American uh, uh, author Natalie Koch's uh, writings on the critical geopolitics of higher education. I think this is exactly what uh, constitutes uh, one of the most interesting uh, parts of our uh, of our activities in uh, this uh, big uh, project. And uh, uh, I like this idea of critical job policy of higher education because sometimes uh, what we are doing is not only education per se, but it's also part of uh, uh, something more uh, uh, something wider or something broader. And uh, what Natalie Koch in, uh, her, uh, in her publication discussed is uh, how Western knowledge, Western expertise meets non-Western educational uh, and academic uh, system and what comes of this uh, hybridization, what comes out of this, uh, of this, of this interface. Uh, how practices of liberal education encounter illiberal uh, milieus and she's uh, categorically against labeling countries as liberal or illiberal, but liberal and liberal are just practices that are related to specific actors. And this is your, I think, a very important contribution to, to the debate. And she also uh, did many interviews uh, just trying to find out what are the motivations of this. Uh, well, she basically focuses on, on American scholars, but I think we can also discuss this as a part of a wider Western educational paradigm. Uh, she was very uh, interested in uh, 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 knowing what are the motivations of uh, this, uh, let's say, Western scholars who invest their times and uh, uh, spend a lot of uh, uh, efforts on uh, teaching in, uh, let's say, different uh, uh, different environments, and uh, she discovered many uh, many, let's say, uh, basic motivations, like, for example, being the agent of change mission. Uh, 
uh, versus uh, being kind of uh, having a, uh, let's say, cultural uh, cultural position, a position of patronizing and up to now colonial approach. So she has a very interesting perspectives on that. Uh, she also discusses how much uh, ideology matters for educational activities, uh, ideologies in the sense of liberal values of free thinking, critical thinking, and exposing uh, uh, tolerant and liberal attitudes to, to the society uh, versus just teaching as a purely technical uh, technical process that not, does not necessarily imply uh, imply certain um, uh, certain ideological um, elements. So, uh, for those of you who are interested in that, I think uh, this would be quite an interesting, at least, starting point for uh, for the discussion. Well, my own uh, um, take on uh, on this uh, educational activities beyond uh, national borders or cross-border, trans-border educational activities is related to uh, the concept of governmentality, which I think is very uh, appropriate for understanding EU's uh, documents and EU's policies on uh, investing into project-based uh, activities. This governmentality uh, is a concept uh, that uh, uh, denotes uh, uh, all types of social and political and economic activities related to knowledge, and that's what we have here. It's expansion of knowledge-based economy. And I think EU is quite explicit in that. Then it's developing critical and independent thinking. Uh, then it's about investing in more kind of uh, rational understanding of the world and rationalization of policymaking. Uh, investment into uh, uh, responsible social behavior, which is also part of this uh, of this paradigm of transferable knowledge, and uh, the spillover effects. And ultimately, and this is also we, we can uh, find in uh, EU documents, it's uh, uh, resilient society, a society that can withstand uh, threats and uh, dangers. And I think the the COVID nineteen is a, a perfect uh, example of. Uh, how timely uh, your uh, EU uh, uh, policies of uh, fostering and uh, enhancing uh, resilience as a part of EU uh, mechanisms. Uh, now, uh, that, that was just a very short, uh, um, short uh, general framing. Now, how all these issues are seen from, from the perspective of my university in Tartu here in Estonia. Uh, and I think this experience might, well, of course, I should not overgeneralize with it because Tartu is a particular uh, a place uh, geographically and even geopolitically was always a kind of a crossroads. And uh, in uh, political science and international relations, uh, in the last, uh, well, I would say 15 years, 15, even more, 20 years, uh, my colleagues uh, uh, are definitely uh, uh, interested in developing uh, this let's say, Eastern agenda, agenda of uh, connecting uh, our education resources with, uh, uh, with Eastern uh, neighbors of the EU. And uh, what we can, uh, can see quite easily, uh, looking at this 10, 15 years of developing, uh, let's say, non-EU uh, studies, uh, uh, contacts and communication, a clear shift uh, towards, uh, towards East, the global East. There's a concept of global East in uh, academic literature, I think it's quite applicable to what we are doing here. And uh, we started with developing, uh, uh, developing uh, studies in, uh, let's say, Russia studies and uh, offering uh, European studies programs to Russian partners, of course, including uh, all different possible uh, funding schemes. And at a certain point, uh, I could say that Russia was a priority partner uh, for uh, for the university. I mean, for this uh, part of the just of start in our institute. Then it clearly shifted towards Eastern Europe, uh, which includes Ukraine, uh, Moldova, Belarus. Then it shifted towards Caucasus, and then now what I see is uh, much more uh, uh, much more uh, educational uh, activities with. Uh, Central Asian uh, partners, and we are just finishing a project in uh, Tajikistan with it. So I think this uh, uh, this um, series of shifts they can also be uh, discussed as a part of this uh, Natalie Cox critical geopolitics of higher education, because uh, it's not only about uh, education as such, but it, it also has some political logic uh, behind that. And uh, that's again what I'm more interested in in, uh, in in this topic is how different political logics uh, 
including geopolitical, et cetera, how they interfere, how they uh, frame, how they change our um, educational uh, priorities, whether they help or uh, whether they uh, more uh, create, uh, create issues and uh, problems. I think it's, it is both. Uh, a, a clear political di dimension was related to the discussion that we've had uh, couple of, or even more than a couple of years ago, in fact, 2014, after the annexation of Crimea and the de facto discontinuation of, uh, let's say, normal, regular EU or Russia uh, set of uh, uh, contacts and connections. And we've had a kind of internal discussion on the forms of cooperation with non-democratic countries, having basically in mind Russia, but some of our colleagues also extended it to other, uh, to other countries. And um, of course, we did have any, uh, we, we did reach any consensus on that, but definitely Russia, starting from 2014-15, uh, uh, started losing its uh, key importance uh, for, I mean, for, for, uh, uh, for this framework that we have uh, established a uh, uh, decade ago, I mean, uh, looking at Russia and the European Union, as a part of uh, one uh, big international paradigm. So since we saw uh, much more uh, uh, gaps and cleavages uh, and conflict between the two, so we definitely had to rework some of our uh, academic and educational activities uh, as well. And ultimately, it led to defocusing on EU Russia studies. And if you're interested in some details, uh, we had a program on EU Russia studies that was operational for, for a decade. Uh, now it lost its um, academic uh, autonomy and was uh, integrated into a broader uh, study program on uh, international politics, on regulations and regional studies. So I think it, it, it also reflects this, uh, this general uh, trend of, uh, you know, impossibility to talk about EU and Russia as a uh, uh, partner or good neighbors. Uh, so we need a different, uh, a different paradigm for that. Uh, then, uh, on the positive side, uh, this uh, shift towards uh, 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 towards global orient uh, definitely gave us a new quality of networking. Uh, and uh, what, what I noticed as uh, the most beneficial elements of this new quality of networking is uh, that the most active uh, uh, of our partners were uh, two groups. Uh, European nationals uh, who are working and teaching beyond the EU. So we have partners, for example, uh, I mean, EU nationals who teach in Georgia and who speak uh, uh, Georgian language. I also met uh, in Tajikistan uh, a, a Polish colleague who is well uh, uh, rooted in the local milieu and she speaks local language and she, uh, she stays there as a professional. So we have a new type of uh, educational actors, I mean, individuals who are well embedded in, into these, uh, let's say, uh, non-EU milieus. That's one, one group. And another group is non-EU citizens who are uh, working and uh, who, are, uh, who live in Europe and who are working in European universities. That's uh, also a, a very interesting group of, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, newcomers who uh, contribute a lot to um, and in a lot of educational and uh, academic media in uh, European universities. We definitely uh, use this shift towards East for developing and enhancing our expertise in the Asian studies in, uh, in the University of Tartu. Uh, and uh, we have uh, an Asian center, which is a new, um, uh, new project based on the consortium of all three Estonian universities. But I think the University of Tartu plays one of the leading roles uh, there. So uh, that's also a kind of a, uh, um, an added value to uh, developing European studies in uh, non-European countries. So you can always get some some positive feedback, and you can use this this uh, this, um, this networks for uh, uh, developing uh, Asian studies in uh, European universities. But in the meantime, also, uh, we have a growing number of issues that we are discussing. And that's also this is a part of our opening to, uh, uh, to the East, uh, the Eastern uh, neighbors. Uh, since uh, uh, from year to year, we have much more diverse uh, student audience. 
uh, we started th thinking about whether this diversity, apart from uh, those definitely positive benefits, might, all, might also be a kind of an issue that we need to consider. Because, for example, if you have in the audience students from Ar Armenia and Azerbaijan, Russia and Ukraine, uh, I know Abkhazia and uh, Georgia, uh, well, in that case, you might uh, feel that some of the issues might be divisive. And we never before discussed these topics. Uh, that also brings us back to, uh, let's say, political component of our educational activity, because the easiest way out of that would be just to skip and try to uh, not to touch this issue that might be divisive, that might be controversial, because of ethnic or religious issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that, I don't think that this, this is an option. And I think we need to discuss much more this, uh, you know, set of sensitive issues and uncomfortable topics, uh, just for the sake of avoiding uh, completely uh, disregarding them and trying to teach those issues in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in a way that would uh, not be conducive to splits and, and uh, you know, divisions and partitions within, again, increasingly uh, international audience. Uh, we faced a number of legal issues uh, related to uh, the way how uh, different groups of students coming from different cultures and different uh, uh, backgrounds understand the equal treatment. And uh, we've, we've had some issues related to um, uh, alleged uh, discrimination. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but again, this is something new that we are, uh, we are dealing with. And another, that, that's my last point, another thing is um, uh, the high proportion of non-local students coming from those countries with whom we have cooperated uh, and for whom we are visible enough uh, might face a political reality here uh, in Estonia. Uh, well, let's say some uh, uh, parties represented in the government, they became increasingly skeptical about uh, the growing proportion of non-Estonian students uh, studying in Estonian universities. And uh, this is all not, not on conversation. The government uh, has uh, passed the amendments to the law that uh, complicates uh, uh, life for uh, non-EU nationals living here in terms of their job opportunities, in terms of inability to bring family members uh, with them to Estonia, uh, etc. And uh, the COVID-19 also sharpened this, uh, this discussion in, in Estonian society very much. Because uh, uh, different universities develop different uh, policies uh, towards their uh, uh, towards the students and their partner institutions, the University of Tartu remained open to all uh, all students, but the Technical University in Tallinn uh, took a very controversial decision of uh, uh, withdrawing uh, matriculation to I think 500 uh, uh, students from non-EU countries. Uh, who were unable to come to Estonia without quarantine and without uh, tests, etc. So the decision was taken not to accept that and to reschedule their uh, matriculation for next year, which created a very, I would say, uh, intense discussion, not only in the academic milieu, but also in the society at large, which again uh, brings me back to uh, the point of how much uh, what we are doing is related to uh, a political, different political logics and different political uh, rationalities. So this situation of closed borders also brings the new challenges to us because we deal with situation with multiple uh, unknown unknowns. To use this uh, uh, famous reference to one of American policymakers, uh, so we don't know what the motivations of students and whether they would be happy to stay online or they would do whatever it takes to. Uh, uh, to overcome all those difficulties and uh, uh, to be able to physically uh, be present. Uh, we don't know how much uh, uh, we would need to invest into <clears throat> developing our double track policy because we all uh, who teach here, uh, we have in fact two tracks. One is related to face to face students, in class students, and another track is related to online students. This is a completely new type of educational activity, and uh, we are just uh, looking at that uh, uh, as uh, some kind of challenge and very experimental field. Uh, again, uh, I think it's too early to draw some conclusions uh, from that. Maybe in our next meeting, we can spend more time on uh, discussing uh, this new challenge. So I will stop here and uh, again, thank you for your, um, for your attention. Many thanks, great presentation.
dear colleagues, uh, please all raise your hand or use chat function for questions. Just one moment, please. Okay, Bashak, please. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to find raise hand option, but I, I was uh, terrible. You, you can do it with your one. voice. Uh, Andre, this was a great presentation, really. I mean, it was very insightful. Thank you very much for this. Okay. Uh, I really learned a lot, but I was just wondering, I mean, I could see the hurdles of this kind of an endeavor in, um, in different parts of the world, basically, in our region. Uh, but I was just wondering if you ever, I mean, from your, from your experience, can, you, um, um, can we talk about any transformatory effect of this kind of a Jean Monnet um, introduction, as to put it this way? Um, do you think that it had a transformatory effect? Because you talked about the political uh, uh, frictions, uh, which is quite the case in, you know, in uh, many different cases. But, uh, uh, this, but, but at the same time, oops. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, but at the same time, um, there is a new generation coming up, which are kind of you know, trying to live up to um, different, um, a different world than their, you know, parents, you know. <laughs> I think it's uh, Rahima who talks. Rahima, <laughs> can you please uh, mute your mm -hmm. microphone? Okay, go. Yeah. go. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, do you think that this kind of uh, um, Jean Monnet and Navar had a transformatory effect uh, in terms of students, in terms of the e EU studies? That is so, I really would like to hear about your uh, experience. <clears throat> Well, my experience is that, yes, definitely there is a transformative uh, effect uh, in, uh, I would say, in most of our educational activities. And uh, this transformative effect might take different forms. Well, for example, when it comes to our project in Tajikistan, on developing European studies in Tajikistan, uh, well, we started from uh, almost, uh, you know, ground zero. Uh, and... Um, that was a very hard uh, experience for us. And they said, on the one hand, and it was very instructive uh, professionally. Uh, but in the meantime, um, of course, we had to deal with uh, huge differences in uh, uh, bureaucratic cultures, in administrative cultures, in uh, procedures, et cetera, et cetera. So I would say that ultimately my, uh, uh, my conclusion from this project is that students uh, whom I have met here in Tartu and in Dushanbe are, well, they transform themselves much easier than administrative structures. That's what I mean. And you can, you, you can have, you can trace these transformative effects when you look at students, and sometimes you are less optimistic when you are look at, uh, well, these nameless and faceless uh, bureaucratic, uh, let's call them structures, procedures, this invisible hand of, uh, you know, uh, of, of, of university, uh, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, the spirit of, uh, uh, of, of the university. So uh, in, in, I also noticed a very drastic, uh, well, first of all, the interest. Uh, I didn't expect that much of interest from the part of uh, students of this country to, to Europe and to Estonia. Uh, we've had always very, uh, uh, very open conversations. So I didn't see any, let's say, mental uh, orders, and I think that's also an important and and language language skills uh, uh, they have uh, you know improved drastically in these two or three years of developing um, uh, developing this project. Uh, in the meantime, what I also uh, noticed that um, in uh, most of the countries uh, with uh, which we have cooperated uh, in one project or another. Uh, students and uh, junior scholars, uh, doctoral students, they increasingly tend to stand, uh, stay in their countries uh, and uh, contribute to, to changes in their countries, as opposed to uh, looking for uh, job opportunities uh, in Europe, which would be also logical in, in many respects. But 
again, I, I cannot uh, uh, justify this with some, some kind of statistics, but uh, my intuitive feeling is that uh, most of the students and local students who go through our educational programs and uh, our project-based activities, they seriously consider uh, coming back uh, to countries like Georgia, Ar Armenia, and uh, Azerbaijan, Ukraine, uh, and to, to, yeah, to be part of their educational uh, communities, which I think is also, uh, also important. Okay, thank you, Miruna. Hello, everybody. Uh, do you hear me well? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, first of all, I wanted to uh, share with you, Professor Makarchev, that I'm very happy that uh, uh, we are in a workshop together because I'm uh, working a lot with your theories and I'm quoting you in my articles and I'm privileged to hear you in person. Thank you. Uh, I think you've done a great uh, job in using Foucaultian theory on biopolitics in um, analyzing Russia's foreign policy. Uh, and uh, I was very happy to see that you will discuss governmentality uh, and its uh, consequences for teaching EU studies. Because I think this is, as we are in the beginning of our project, it's just the first year, mm -hmm. I think this fits very well with what we are trying to do. Uh, you saw that we use the term periphery in our project, which should uh, annoy a lot of people or should uh, create reactions. Actually, in Romania, it already did. I was discussing about this project and one of, the, one of my professors said, oh, this is so stupid. Why would you work in a project on periphery and include Romania in it. So it was a burst of uh, nationalism, <laughs> you know, in, uh, in that. So I think um, that uh, post-structuralist theory could definitely provide some great insight in uh, critical thinking in geopolitics in also how we teach geopolitics. I wanted to say that we have to first think about who are our students and what is their professional futures. Most of them will be working in ministries of foreign affairs or in administrations doing mm -hmm. foreign policy, right? So I think it's very critical political action what we are doing in teaching them to think in a geopolitical way. Uh, and that is why I believe that uh, we definitely, uh, especially in Eastern Europe, in Western Balkans, uh, and in uh, Eastern neighborhood, we definitely need to unpack this concept of Easternness. Uh, I was very happy that you used the concept of orientalization uh, of uh, how we see and how we teach Eastern Europe or whatever EU neighborhood. Uh, because I think there is a change of generations, and this is also my question to you. Uh, there was a generation of researchers uh, that were educated in the Cold War mentality, and they perpetuated it during the 90s and the 2000s. At least this is also my perspective in Romania. My professors were teaching Kissinger, whatever, mm -hmm. geopolitics. Um, and then there was a transition generation that started to go abroad and to to, to learn from a Western academia what the East is. And I think that was another extreme uh, and another type of inferiority syndrome in discussing about our own position in the world through the Western gaze. Um, and this uh, created a generation uh, very much focused on Europeanization and how great EU is and how the light comes from Brussels and blah, blah, blah. And I think now we are facing, after 2010 particularly, and of course in the case of Ukraine and other countries after 2014 and the Crimea moment, waking up moment, I think we are uh, facing uh, a new generation of scholars that uh, studied in the West but didn't uh, mimic the Western gaze on, our, on ourselves, right? So I think uh, we are now in a position with this kind of Jean Monnet project and other networks to uh, promote a new generation of researchers uh, that define Easternness and define periphery in more critical and more diverse sense, not based on solely the Europeanization trendy agenda and not based on orientalization. Uh, Iruna?
let's say, status at the international level. How do you think our project can uh, uh, enhance uh, teaching in a critical way, uh, periphery and Easternness? Well, that's a great comment. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you are thinking, uh, let's say, beyond educational technicalities and uh, have a, a big questions uh, for this project. And I would be happy to, uh, to contribute to this discussion. I'm completely uh, with you when you said that uh, yeah, uh, issues of centrality and peripherality, they, they are social construct. And we all, we contribute to this uh, process of constructing or deconstructing them uh, through what we teach, how we teach, what we uh, publish and how we publish, etc. cetera. Um, I think uh, uh, you are right that the old understanding of geopolitics is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, gradually uh, uh, not disappearing, but it, it loses its, uh, let's say, momentum. And uh, we have a much uh, diverse uh, set of uh, theories and much more nuanced theories that define centrality and uh, peripherality. For example, I start uh, my course on uh, EU and Russia, because uh, I do touch upon uh, different uh, concepts that the, ask this critical question of whether Russia is Europe and it, to, to what extent and what the difference between geographical and let's say uh, political construction of Europe. And I start with the question, do you know how many cities in Europe uh, claim to be center, uh, center of Europe? Starting from, uh, you know, Suhavole in Poland, then Polotsk in, in Belarus, then you have Vilnius, etc. So we have multiple centers, which definitely define that we have multiple peripheries. And of course, this is also not about Romania, this is also about Estonia, that in many respects also shares this uh, geographical location and was always, uh, was always a part of, uh, you know, uh, big geopolitical struggles. What we can do in educational sense, I think we can take advantage of that. We can, uh, all in a good sense, sell the legacy and the heritage of those uh, uh, meeting points uh, as uh, great places to study uh, Europe. Because you can, of course, you can go to uh, to Sarbonne, you can go to, to Berlin, and you will study Europe. Let's say basically from a position of uh, uh, those who uh, develop uh, the, their uh, their their understanding of uh, their countries as uh, being uh, undeniably central for Europe. Uh, but what if you want to a little bit diversify? That, that's also the message to students. What you would like to a little bit diversify your your experience. What if you would like to look at Europe from the position of, uh, uh, let's say, multiple crossroads? Uh, and multiple, okay, if you don't like periphery, you can say margins. Mar and margins, I mean, it's not something which is pejorative. Margins is uh, the, the most active part of the society. The, 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 the basically are those, let's say, non-central uh, groups that want to, you know, fit in and want to propose something something new. Uh, well, before, uh, before COVID, we intentionally uh, trying to position uh, our institute as uh, one of the, uh, let's say, uh, peripheral marginal, in a good sense, uh, uh, places to, to study. And we ha have invited, for example, uh, Martin Müller from Switzerland, uh, from, uh, from Zurich, who developed this concept of Global East as a keynote speaker. Uh, we also are in touch with other, let's say, big names in this area, like uh, Madina Tlostano, for example, uh, who wrote a lot about uh, uh, different, let's say, nuances uh, in uh, defining our spaces and how we define that. Uh, and the last point, I think we need new methods for teaching. Uh, for example, what, what I do just to develop this critical thinking, one of my summons for this course on uh, Europe and Russia uh, is a team-based work, group-based work, and the assignment is that you need to visualize uh, those places of uh, uh, interaction between different cultures that you see around here in uh, Tartu or maybe in Tallinn or in the city of Narva, which has a, a very different background, the European city, which is 99% populated by Russophones. So you can see this diversity. And the more, I am just trying to develop these critical skills of critical thinking and uh, ask students to visualize and to tell a visualized story about what you have seen around. Not going to the library, not studying, uh, let's say, academic text, but just looking around and uh, being able to catch uh, this.
so thank you very much, Professor. And in order to draw a conclusion that could be useful for our project from this, uh, I think one of our objectives should be to redraw a little bit uh, the maps, but of course, uh, in a very uh, critical and constructive way Absolutely. in order to uh, show students that there are many ways to position themselves and other actors uh, on the map in mm -hmm. an, and that every drawing of a map is very political. This is exactly. important, right? And in this sense, what Natalie Koch uh, said that we should not uh, label countries as liberal, democratic or illiberal, non-democratic. This becomes if they're applicable to specific practices, specific institutions, specific people. It's not about countries because in, in this case, our map would be a little bit uh, oversimplified. It's within each of the liberal community, you might have illiberal practices and the other way around. Within illiberal, allegedly illiberal communities, you can have uh, some spaces for uh, a liberal uh, practices and experience. So this is very, uh, very pertinent, I think. Okay. Eric, please, a question, comments? Well, I have a, thank you. Thank you, Andre, great, great talk. I have uh, been uh, thinking a lot about uh, my conversations with the people east of Finland and uh, the, how, how it sometimes gets to be uncomfortable, as, <clears throat> as you put it, sensible topics, etc. And uh, I think you are well positioned here to, to say something about that. Uh, when is it that we, as sort of simple-minded Westerners, touch, well, to hurt, hurt the feelings of, let's say, Russians? <clears throat> well, well, my experience is that, again, I can be orientalized myself because I come from Russia and from the viewpoint of, uh, well, maybe a different, uh, a different perspective, I'm kind of orientalized uh, teacher who teaches in, uh, let's say, EU-based and NATO-based uh, country. Uh, so in this sense, I, I do understand all the sensitivities, and uh, but in the meantime, it's not, it's not only about Russia. I mean, uh, I can imagine that teaching American politics uh, today can be as divisive as teaching, I know, Russian politics. So it's it's kind of universal uh, universal paradigm. Uh, well, what I learned from my uh, experience of teaching these sensitive issues is that first of all you you're not supposed to be judgmental uh, but in the meantime you also should uh, be able to, to deliver a strong message because I'm completely against uh, this uh, apolitical or depoliticized language in which we would skip naming things as they are uh, for example, if this is an ex annexation, this is an annexation, and you can do very little with that, even if you would, would like to respect feelings of someone coming from a country that annexed uh, uh, another territory. I mean, in that case, I don't think that there, there, in language there might be some compromises. Uh, and, and I can defend my position, I mean, academically and uh, professionally. Well, in some other cases, while I would prefer to use more, let's say, uh, more neutral, um, uh, more neutral language. Uh, it, it, it depends. It's very contextual. I don't see one simple solution to that. Okay, and the last question from chat function from Irina Sikorskaya. Why Tajikistan? Why you decided to develop or support the development of EU studies there in Tajikistan? Is was any particular reason? Well, I think the reason was that uh, starting from, uh, well, let's say a few years ago, we started uh, thinking about the developing uh, Asian uh, dimension to our studies because Asia was missing in our uh, curricula and in our professional uh, maps. And uh, I think, uh, as seen from the viewpoint of our institute, Central Asia could be as a kind of a bridge to, let's say, uh, to the real Orient. And uh, to some extent, this is uh, still uh, Russian language milieu, which might uh, facilitate uh, some kind of uh, everyday context. Uh, and we have uh, Russian speaking uh, people here. 
so I think it, 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 it was just uh, one of the ways of opening up to uh, uh, to this global orient uh, this is just uh, uh, one of the first steps but in the meantime we also developed a Chinese uh, Chinese vector uh, for that okay many thanks Andre I knew it would be exciting presentation many many thanks again for joining us today <laughs> thank you thanks a lot okay and let's uh, let's keep in touch let's stay in touch I'm really curious what uh, you're Definitely. going to you know plan and uh, design for yourself for next uh, next next stage of the project Definitely. thank you very much excuse me if you don't mind I, I, would, don't. Also, I would also like to uh, uh, to deliver my appreciation to this uh, very interesting presentation and I also uh, uh, can uh, uh, prove your or, or evidence your words by saying that our uh, brilliant uh, graduates who started at Tartu University, they surprisingly came back to Ukraine and uh, are quite good in, uh, in implementing reformation processes in different spheres. So uh, I think this is the one of the major advances uh, of the international projects like that. Absolutely, I agree completely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.